the October Plus Sneak starts right now! The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. And by Broadway Limited Imports, the cutting edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at broadway-limited.com. And by Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for October 2023. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we do have a good show in that. I take you, along with our podcast crew, we go to the RPM meet, the St. Louis Prototype Modelers meet that's held every year over in Collinsville, Illinois, just across the river. And this show was a treat to go to. There was about 800 people in attendance, along with a lot of manufacturers. The one thing that was prevalent this year was a lot of the new 3D startup companies that are out there making amazing models. The RPM Meet is a special show in that you can hang out with like-minded modelers just like us, whereas they truly have a passion for their hobby, and you can see it through all the different models that are on display at the RPM show. So enjoy that part of the show, whereas we interview a couple of layouts, I believe. We also have a few manufacturers and just do some great interviews with some great people. Also on this show this month, I just finished in the last couple of days shooting these beautiful models that are right in front of us here on this uh, table. These are all from Broadway Limited. This is their Commodore Vanderbilt, the streamlined New York Central locomotive that was so famous they didn't even put a locomotive number on it because it didn't need a number. This thing is exquisite, die cast, just a beautiful model that we feature later on in the show. I've also got some American Car and Foundry 6,000 gallon tank cars that they sent, which come in a multitude of paint schemes, private owners. These cars are a treat. They also sent us some 70 ton hopper cars. Those of course made up about 1.5% of all the hopper cars out on the American railroads during the time. These cars lasted up through the 80s. Also this month on the show, Bachman Industries stops by and they share with us a lot of the new products that they are announcing for this year. They were announced at the Annamarie National and they will be announced here on this show for October. So look forward to that segment from Bachman Industries in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Also be sure to check out the What's Neat This Week podcast that we shoot down here on the property every weekend, keeping you updated on what's new in the hobby on a weekly basis with special guests, a regular podcast crew, and a lot of beautiful models to look at all the time. So with that, let's continue on with this October 2023, What's Neat. <laughs> For this segment of What's Neat, I am shooting some beautiful models from Broadway Limited today outside. It's the best part of the year that I love where temperatures hover around 70 all day and it makes for just great photo shoot days out in the backyard. Today I'm shooting this gorgeous Hudson, the Commodore Vanderbilt a streamlined locomotive that Broadway Limited has come out with. I got some beautiful photography of this model that I want to share with you as I discuss and talk about this model. This is one of the locomotives that New York Central had where they didn't put a locomotive number on the locomotive because everybody knew 
who the Commodore Vanderbilt was. It was one of the most beautiful locomotives that the New York Central, of many that they had, and Broadway Limited hasn't missed a beat on this one. It is all die cast. It's got full Paragon 4 sound in the Rolling Thunder line. It's got disc wheels on it, and it is streamlined. It has still got tons of detail on it all the way around, including the tender and the top of the locomotive, and it's just exquisite. Not to mention this thing runs really smooth, and because of its weight, it obviously can pull a lot of train, but this was dedicated mostly to passenger service on the New York Central. Also today, I was shooting outside these beautiful ACF, American Car and Foundry 6,000 gallon tank cars that Broadway Limited has recently released. They are coming out in a multitude of paint schemes. You can find these on their website. I've got four of them here today to share with you with also outdoor photography, which I will show you as I talk about these very detailed, beautiful little cars. These were mostly owned by private uh, entities as the prototype railroads. They did use them also for hauling fuel and things like that. But I mean, metal wheels, metal couplers, just exquisite detail on these beautiful, beautiful little tank cars. They also sent me some 70 ton coal hoppers. We all know these as these were a great part of the railroads, up to 1.5% of the freight cars out there in the fleet were comprised of these cars. They come with full loads. They're made absolutely off of blueprints, so all the detail that you see is accurate down to the smallest rivet detail. I shot these models from on top and on the sides and in groups so I can share with you how beautiful these models look out in real sunlight as they will look fantastic on your layout as well. I really enjoy the fact that Broadway Limited is working with us at What's Neat to share and just display and show some of the beautiful models and what really goes into what they do to make some of the most beautiful models for us on our railroad. Prototypically accurate, they run fantastic. There's no other way to say it. Check out the website or Google Broadway Limited on the internet and you will find all the various road names, all the various colors of paint schemes for the tank cars. It's a treat and I'm sure that you'll find some that would blend themselves well to your model railroading layout. And so with that, that is this segment for What's Neat. Hi, I'm Bill. And I'm Stephanie. And you're watching What's Neat with Ken Patterson. For this show, we are at the St. Louis RPM meet here in Collinsville, Illinois for the 2023 show. I've got with me Daniel Coombs over here. I've got my buddy right next to me, Joshua Barton, and myself, Ken Patterson. And we're planning to do some interviews with a lot of the wonderful vendors, beautiful models this time around. We've walked the floor. There's a lot of neat stuff and new technology this year at this show. So look forward to that, guys. What do you think so far? I think I'm already buying stuff. I think there's all kinds of awesome stuff here, and I can't wait to see all of it. What do you think? I always leave with stuff I didn't need, but I always get it anyway. Man, it's good to see you, Daniel. We don't see you that often. I know, I've been working full time, man, but I'm gonna probably bring some models for tomorrow, Saturday. I just got in about an hour ago, but yeah, let's go ahead and see what we got around here. I know, right? Let's spend some money, do some interviews, and have some fun. And let's throw some hats out. <laughs> I'm standing here with one of my favorites who always shows up with a different module at this show every year. Modules. And that's Pete Munger. Hey, Pete. Ken, nice to see you again. It's always good to see you, sir. Thank you. This year you brought something special, it looks like. It's got an Amtrak theme to it. Well, you know, these manufacturers continue to just spoil the heck out of us, don't they? Yes. And so the, the Dio tends to be a reflection on how bad I've been distracted by something new. Okay. So, this year, um, I tried to build something to incorporate the uh, Athern 
uh, SDP 40Fs that Genesis they did in that Genesis line a couple of years yes, ago. Yes, beautiful. And then these Rapido guys are spoiling us every quarter with something new. <laughs> and they brought the E8s out, so I had to do something passenger okay. to be able to feature that. So the Dios, as you know, we've kind of discussed before, kind of pr provide us a, a canvas to feature that eye candy that these manufacturers are giving us. It's True that. so much fun and. And then my buddies are weathering them up and making them uh, look w real. So it's been uh, fun to, to do that again this year. No, the models are absolutely beautiful and the weathering is second to none. Now you've also got a lot of beautiful buildings this year. Well, uh, again, the weathering, again, I've got to go, you know, and give a shout out to my buddy Steve Hurt. Yes. Who's not able to join us this year. We missed Steve this year. He wanted me to be sure. And, pass along his hello to you he and his dad they promised me they'll be back next year awesome and so Steve uh, I've been able to, to get him to help me with some of the vehicle weathering again and Joel Nicodemus my buddy out of Cape Coral Florida who we've got to get him up here Ken right he's uh, just incredible with the way he weathers my stuff and I certainly appreciate that so um, so it's, walk through and describe the module and just start at one end and, and then we'll we're going to show this as you discuss it. Okay, great, great. Well, what I've got here is I've got something that uh, I call Arimathea, um, which has a little bit of, not to get biblical, but it does have a biblical connotation. I was kind of uh, not paying attention in church one Sunday during the holy season, and this whole concept of, of Joseph of Arimathea was being discussed, and I thought, boy, that would fit with Amtrak. So. We've got a station named Arimathea. Okay. And uh, so that's what this, this dial represents. And then I've got the passenger units at the one end. And then Walther's with their cornerstone kits continue to provide us all sorts of things to uh, kind of kit bash. And so I've done that. And then once again, you know, Woodland Scenics does these, these build ups that are right out of the box yes. with weathering. And I've got uh, a Sully's Tavern kit over there that I had some fun with. And then, uh, Scrounging around under the old layout and pulling the old boxes out, I found some old Concord U-Haul trucks, and I said, "Steve, can you fit these in? Can you weather these up for me?" And so Steve uh, managed to do a few of the U-Haul yeah, those -Haul, look absolutely uh, trucks fantastic. So that's what this year is, and then uh, we'll get back at it here in a couple months and try to figure out something to maybe share with you next year. You also have some beautiful backdrops this year. Well, thank you. Um, the, uh, the backdrops obviously help give it a little bit of perspective. They're, they're a bit of a hassle to try to set up at a show, but uh, it, it does bring it uh, kind of the into scale, into scale, so. Right. Uh, but Ken, I gotta tell you, thanks for doing this for us every year. I know that this uh, can probably be uh, a challenge for you, especially when you come to a show like this and you've got so many wonderful mo models that the level of, uh, of skill that is exhibited here every year is just incredible. And I, I really enjoy coming down once a year and seeing you and seeing Daniel and your crew and then just seeing the, the modelers. For those who, who have not had an opportunity to come to St. Louis and see the proto uh, meet, boy, I sure would encourage them there you to go. do it because it's just, it, it, in, it invigorates you. It, it, it motivates you and inspires you to go and model something. That's uh, awesome. And it's just really fun to be part of that. I'm telling you what, the people, there's a lot of love in this room. Boy, the sure talent is. that this is in this room. We haven't even begun to look at the models yet, just being here just for a few hours and getting started with this show. There's so much to absorb in just two days, it's almost not enough. Boy, it's so well said, Ken, I agree with you. I agree with you, absolutely. We sound like we're on the, the Visitors and Convention Bureau. Let's go St. back Lewis. to the layout for a minute. The <laughs> one thing I notice is your trees are exquisite. The, the leaves, everything is just, it looks realistic. Well, thank you, Ken. You know, those are Scenic Express. Okay. And um, a few nice weekends every summer. You know, the beautiful thing about our hobby is there's so much diversity. If you're into doing uh, wiring, you can do wiring. If you want to build kits, you can build kits. If you want to do uh, some weathering, you can do weathering. You got to kind of be in the mood for each of those things, as you well know. You got to have time, number one, right. but you got to be in the mood. And so the scenery thing is something that I don't always have the buzz for. It kind of is is very very sporadic. Um, but I have fun doing the scenic express trees because I do them outside, and uh, 
you know, I'll, I'll, I'll joke with my, my kids who are now uh, no longer teenagers. They say, Dad, what are you hanging on the rope out back by the tree? And I'm saying, it's all legal. It's trees. These are HO scale trees. Okay. And they get a big chuckle out of it. So. That's awesome. Pete, thank you again for sharing your work with us. Thank you, Ken, for having me and for doing this for all the modelers. We really appreciate everything that you and your crew do on a weekly basis. So there you go. Thank That's you perfect. again. All right, brother. All right, man. Thanks. <laughs> hey, Daniel, look who I found here at the show. It's Mike Zucker. Hey. Hey, Mike. Hey, guys. How's it going today? It's good. Listen, I wanted yeah. to give you one of Denny's oh. hats that he made for us, the What's Neat yep. This Week podcast hat. Thank it's you very red. Much. It matches your shirt. Oh, it's So, be how perfect. was your trip here? Is everything good and you're selling? Oh, yeah. No, it was a good trip down. Jeff and I came down this year, so he's out shopping since this is primarily an HO show. So, I got to man the booth. He gets to have the fun, but it's been good. So, good there crowd, go. right? It's always good getting to see everybody here in the St. Louis area, right? Of course, this RPM draws all over the country, right? I right. mean, there's guys from all over the place, which is awesome. So, it's so true. Yeah, it shows a lot, right? Modeling skills are crazy here. So, oh my gosh, the models, uh, the capacity of various, the, the caliber of oh, the modelers, it's right? It's amazing, right? I like these learning stations. This is my first time here, right? Okay. So, seeing these learning stations and stuff, that's pretty neat. Yeah. So, there's some neat stuff out there. So. That's awesome. Now, Daniel, I see there's a lot of Atherin stuff, Rapido stuff, Wathers things. There's a lot of 3D printed things that they've got. You're going to spend some money here, right? Oh, for sure. For sure. I got to. And if you got some decoders, I'm going to pick up some soundtrack stuff from George. Uh -oh. Thanks, George. <laughs> know, there right? you go. There you go. There's some good stuff. So we got a couple new 3D printed stuff here with us. And of course, we brought all our details. So check out some of the new grain bin type things, right? Agricultural detail parts. So. We're trying to get help some guys out with that. So now, just a couple of weeks ago, you had your semi-annual show in Dejler, Nebraska, yep. that you guys put on. How did that go? Oh, it was awesome. So I think it was our fifth show that we've done. So that's been pretty cool. So it was a great time. Had a lot of uh, what do we have about eleven manufacturers, a couple other vendors there, right? So crowd was awesome. They were having a good time, so that's what we really enjoyed. People coming up to Deschler, right, checking out our store, checking out the events that we host, having a good time. So we're looking forward to the next one. So maybe we can twist uh, what's neat this week to come up and do a show <laughs> here in 2025. That, so, yeah, that was go. a lot of fun. We did that in 2019, I believe, and yeah. that was a good time. Yep. Right. So 2025 so. is going to be our store's 25th anniversary. So we'll see what we can pull off, but hope to see a lot of people there. That's awesome. Mike, I got to thank you and your family, everybody, for the way you promote this hobby. Well, we, we love the hobby. We're all modelers, right? You know, our my brother's wife, my wife has gotten into it with us, right? They're starting to be part of the, the train store, right? So they're getting into it. They kind of like it. So it's just, we That's got cool. the third generation of Zuckers starting to come up <laughs> that like it too. So it's pretty awesome so that's awesome thank you for the few minutes of your time for oh, the uh, thanks, viewers Ken. of the what's neat yep show. thanks everybody hi for this segment of what's neat i'm here with george bogatok at the 2023 rpm meet and george what have we got to talk about today well, we got a lot of cool stuff. Uh, I will say that the Blue Nami is certainly turning heads. Uh, we got a lot of cool things coming out with Blue Nami. We, since we last talked, uh, we've announced our 4 amp decoder for the O scale and larger. Mm -hmm. So the Blue 4408 is available now in stores. And the cool thing is, is I know a lot of large scale guys, especially Mr. Ken over here, uh, has the Garden Railroad. Yep. Well, the Blue 4408 allows you to do onboard battery with the decoder only. So you don't need to buy any expensive throttles, you don't need to buy any receivers or anything like that from third party companies. Hook up a battery to the Blue Nami, install the Blue Nami into the model, and you run your train. Th completely through the free app that's available on your iPhone or iPad, or here's your exclusive braking, Android is coming. 
Guys, I have a prototype uh, beta version of the Android app right here. And you can see right now I'm running this steam locomotive. And all of our functions right there, we can pull up the functions. You've got 0 through 14 and then 15 through 28. And I can just turn them on and off. Whoop. I can just sit here and run them along. And so this is coming along. Um, we're hoping to have this available in the next few weeks. So probably by the time you guys are seeing this, we'll have the Android app ready to go and available for download on the Google Play Store. Nice. nice. So we're really excited about that. I know we're getting a ton of questions about Android. We're not forgetting about the Android guys. It just takes a little bit more time, especially you know trying to get it all working out so that the menus work. But everything works the same way. You have the gear logo here, and you can go through and do all your settings. You can do your sound settings, or we can go through and change the whistle. And what's really cool about this is I can actually click on this, and it will allow me to scroll through and select different whistles and different sounds, and it will play it so that you can hear it, and then you can OK. And what's really great about this is that you're no longer having to worry about CVs, CV numbers, or values, or any of this, because the app will do all of that for you. And so think of this as the easiest way to program it. The cool thing about Blue Nami is it does work on a DCC system as well as DC or analog. You can just use the track for power and run it with the uh, app. But what's really cool is if you have a couple of Tsunami 2 equipped locomotives that you want to run with the Blue Nami, you just simply put them on the track, dial up its DCC address and run it and it'll be just like every other Tsunami 2. But this allows you now the ability to run. So let's say, for argument's sake, you go to somebody else's layout and you can't stand the fact that they're not using an NCE layout decoder or DCC <laughs> system. What happens is now you can open up the app and run your trains and you don't have to worry about learning whatever other brand systems out there. Right. And so it really doesn't need the DCC system, but it is a DCC based product. You can still program CVs directly. There's a menu here where I can go in and set CVs directly. So when I go here to CV settings, I can go in and scan all CVs, read or write individual CVs. So if I want to read CV 128, I can just read it and there's the value of 225. It's just quick and easy. And so that's the good name of the game. We're trying to make sure that we want to make model railroading fun and enjoyable. And really with the Blue Nami, if you've standardized Blue Nami on your entire layout, how many people have one of these things in their oh, pockets? Oh, you know what? I think, I, I, yeah. See, I you actually have one, have one myself. Right. So you could come over to my house and we, now we have two throttles and I don't have to go out and spend money on a new throttle. Right. So all of that's real built in and everybody can come over. They just download the app off their whatever store, the app store, the iPhone, or the uh, Google Play store, yep. and they're running trains. Yep. I know this is a great breakout. Once you guys announced this Blue Nami, and like you said earlier, battery powered, the Garden Railroad guys, even some of the O-Scale guys are dabbling it. Now yep. how much uptick have you got more with the O-Scale market or the large scale market? Uh, large scale's eating this up. Um, we're selling a lot of the large scale markets. I've actually picked up several large scale exclusive retailers around the country that are selling them like hotcakes. And um, because like I said, you're saving a ton of money because you don't have to buy all that third party stuff. So it's really, really good. It's And the, the decoders are affordable. The retail price on our blue 4408 is $255.95. And the uh, Blue Nami for the uh, 2200, which is our uh, HO scale version, is $169.95. You compare that to $200 plus for wireless throttles, and you get the free app built in and a decoder, it's a bargain. You can't beat it. You're almost like breaking even on it. Oh, you're, make, you're making money because, let's say, you get a, a handful of, let's say you have a room of 10 operators. That's $2,000 in throttles that you have to have. Whereas now you just buy Blue Nami. Now you can have each train with three to four throttle locomotives. Uh, uh, Blue Nami equipped locomotives and you can run them all in a cons and as we talked about in the podcast a little over a year ago consisting with these app with the app is a breeze you can do it in a matter of seconds um, I can show you uh, you know how quick and easy it is um, if we want to but uh, as of right now I think we've done it go to our YouTube channel soundtracks uh, on D on, let's see is it soundtracks DCC but just search soundtracks Blue Nami consisting on YouTube. You'll find our channel, you'll see our videos where you can see all of the cool things Blue Nami does in depth uh, that really shows everything. And so we're really excited about it and it's definitely turning heads. Well, perfect. And George, I know you and I have talked. I really like your guys' products. Hey, thank you very much for the information on all this. And that's the segment for What's Neat. Thank you, George. Thanks.
Hi, this is James Regeer, and I'm here with uh, Chris Tice uh, from Gateway Fremo. Hi, Chris. Hi. Good afternoon. How are you? Doing all right. Doing all right. So, how many modules do you have here today? Uh, I'm not, well, we've got quite a few. I don't know the exact number, but uh, we've we've got modules that are actually from Massachusetts to Alabama to Oklahoma, um, Nebraska, Missouri, Illinois that are here represented for the layout. So anyone who wants to come from around the country can bring it to the uh, St. Louis RPM meet and, or uh, whatever show you happen to be at and hook up. Yeah, yeah. So uh, at any one of the uh, RPM setups anywhere in the in the country, there's usually a uh, a Fremo layout involved, and and it's great uh, great opportunity to uh, uh, get modules together from different parts of the country and show off the work of the individual modelers. So what would you say are the benefits of of uh, Fremo as a as a modeling form? Well, one of the benefits of Fremo is that it more prototypically represents the real railroads in that it's a single track main line down the center, uh, passing sidings. There's also the option for uh, double track sections, but it, it more represents realistic operation rather than the uh, type of uh, the layout you'll see a lot of times it's set up at uh, regular train shows. It's more for the general public where it's two or three tracks across and, it, and it's done in a, in a circle. Okay, so it's a little bit different of a, of a standard. You have a certain uh, placement where the joining rails is, are supposed to go, and, uh, and then between there, it's up to you what scene you want to create. That, that's it exactly. I mean, the spec is really the end, the wiring at the end, the rail at the end, and then what you do in between is all a function of what you can transport, what you can afford, what your skills allow you to do, things of that nature. So you can actually build a prototype scene someplace that you always have loved, but it doesn't fit on your normal layout at home, so you can build it as a Fremo module and take it to shows. Uh, you can do uh, just about anything you want. And now what's the average, or what's the standard depth of a module? It's typically 24 inches deep. Uh, the double track ones will go up to 26 inches deep, but that's only at the end plate. So anywhere in between, you can get wider, or you can get narrower if you so desire. As long as they join up at that standard width. That's it exactly, at the end plates, okay. right? And I noticed that you have uh, yeah, that you have some Ys on this layout where you, have, where you have certain joints. What are the standards for those? Well, there really isn't a set standard. Uh, as an example, this huge module behind us is a junction, and uh, it's really just the end plates um, and a minimum radius and a minimum turnout requirement. Um, and then you lay it out accordingly um, to you know, to meet whatever you're trying to model. Oh, cool. So you can bring it to the show, show it off here, and if you have if you have the, your home layout built to similar standards, you can operate it at home or any combination thereof. Right. Right. I mean, if if you have uh, you know, I guess you could call it a docking plate on your home layout. You can plug modules right into it and continue on with your uh, modules as part of the layout at home. Oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. And what can you tell me about the modules that you've brought? Well, the one I've brought is just a small representation of a town of Crocker, Missouri. It's uh, an MFA feed mill, and regrettably, the feed mill is the only part that's still under construction, so it's not here, but the rest of the module's here, and the rest of the module's pretty well finished. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. And, and, and this one's yours right here. No, it's uh, actually further down. Further okay, down. a little bit further yeah. down. Yeah, okay. further down. So, uh, But yeah, like I said, we've got modules from all over the country. Some of them are brand new. Uh, there's two sets here that is the first time they've ever been in a show. Uh, there's a small little 21-inch long one that's right here. And there's a long, um, about a 10-foot long section on the other side. Brand new, first time at the show. Young guys, young modelers just really getting involved in the hobby. And what's the standard height for the branch work? Uh, it, the rail is 50 inches off the floor. So it's really designed for the operator, not so much for the general public viewing. It's designed to set it up and operate it like a real railroad. Oh, that's neat. That's neat. I'm, I'm definitely noticing a lot of realistic scenery throughout. Uh, some beautiful elevators uh, over there. We'll get B-roll footage of those. Um, I, like the, uh, I like the farm, the agricultural scenes. You find that a lot with with Fremo. It, Fremo allows you to do very wide, open country type scenes that you normally wouldn't be able to do on a more condensed uh, uh, home layout. 
Right, right. Yeah, uh, there was a recent article in uh, Model Railroad Hobbyists, in fact, where we talked about the use of uh, of negative space yeah. um, in the gentleman's uh, Rock Island layout, and, and uh, yeah. just a just an outstanding idea. Yeah, I, you know, with with Fremo, you get to be able to set up long runs, wide open spaces. And, and it works, whereas on a home layout, you're trying to put as much action as you can into it in a limited space. You don't get a whole lot of space between towns. Uh, so this, this works out quite well this way. Oh, well, looks uh, looks fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, for, uh, thank you for your time today. All right, thank you. We'll see you around. I'm standing here with Lauren, Izzy, and Sarah from Otter Valley. What an amazing company, guys. What an amazing family. This is what the hobby is all about. So tell us about your company. So Otter Valley Railroad, we're a third generation uh, business in Canada. Uh, we've been in retail shop for 20 years. In the last year and a half, we started making our own product. Nice. I'm the second generation. Isabel is the third generation. Uh, Otter Valley was started by, by both my mom, Cheryl, who's passed away. My father, Rogers, retired and myself 20 years ago. This year was our 20th anniversary, and we hope to be in business for another 20 more years. And I hope to carry on the legacy with my daughter. There you go. So what do you think about all this, Sarah? Uh, it, it, he, he warned me he liked trains. <laughs> it's a lot more than what I thought, but <laughs> it's great. It is. It's fun. Tell me about some of the products now that you're selling. So, the first car we have up, we have the uh, 6400, which is a trash, scrap, and construction debris car. Okay. It's a National Steel uh, Corp prototype. We offered in our first production run, can 128 production SKUs, which is a huge offering. Yes. However, a lot of these cars are in unit trash, construction, and scrap service. And then we followed that up with our second freight car which is the little brother of the 6400, the 6000. Okay. And this will be out in September this year. They're going to be shipping in the next week or two. And then we followed up that up with a third car. And uh, I know you like the, uh, the weathered beautiful. and the prime to grime. This so is beautiful. our third car. This is the Freight Car America 52 foot bulkhead. And it has the faded CN. So these are now been off the CN lease on the CWLX. They handle pipe. And then we're also offering pipe loads for the car. And we also have been offering both construction and, and, de and demolition waste uh, loads, trash loads. And then we're going to be offering scrap loads in the bailed, shredded, and sheared. That's awesome. And to top it off, Kent, we announced three shows. At your car, we announced three cars for this show, which will be the uh, frame car, 89 foot, the NSC and Ebenezer ingot cars, and the NSC three car well car set. And the number of guys that have come up to us and gals at the show that were amazed we announced them both online have been amazing. So these are cars that were much needed and they're coming. And we have three more cars that we're working on to announce for our Canadian show in September. Oh, wow. So as you see, we got a big plan, a big vision, but these ladies inspire me. That's absolutely awesome. We so look forward to seeing what new products that you do come out with in the future. I want to say that your trash loads, all your different loads are amazing, and I absolutely love the hat that Izzy's wearing. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Ken, for having us, and uh, Canada loves you guys, and we love the show. Rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm standing here with... Aaron Piotrowski of Apogee Locomotive Works. And Aaron, we met you last year. You were a brand new startup company that was doing 3D work. Yep. And we were so impressed with that stuff last year that you talked about that I wanted to find out what was new here at your table. Well, uh, today, today we have all of ALW's new 2023 releases. We have the Oskaloosa class, 357 ton heavy electric box cab. We have the Ironton WIC battery storage mining locomotive for, eight, for Owen 30. We have the Lima Hamilton 1000 horsepower that will sit on a uh, Stuart Hobbies uh, Baldwin VO 1000, uh, sorry, and a few other of our freelance and prototype kits. That's absolutely awesome. Now you've also brought some printers with you today, yeah. and it looks like you're using filament printers for the most part. Yeah, um, I have filament machines over here. All the all the shell kits are done in resin, but okay. I started using some of my waste spools, spools that are too small for large projects to turn into packaging for them. And, That's cool as heck. Yeah. So yeah. tell us, what website will we go to to find all these wonderful models? Well, if you go online and take a look at apogeelocomotiveworks.com, or apogeelocoworks.com, you will be able to see all my shell kits, detail parts, and some extra equipment here and there. That's absolutely awesome. Are you having a good show? Have sales been good for you? Yeah, it's a pretty good show. St. Louis is always an important show to hit. That's awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time. Yes, thank you. Hi everybody, I'm here with Bernard Helen of Mini Prince. Hey everybody. We haven't talked with him before. It's his first time here in St. Louis. It is. He traveled all the way from Toronto. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing today. Well, I'm doing two things really. I'm showing some of the Mini Prince uh, minifigures that I created. So I do all sorts of odd, weird, fun, different things, you know, skeletons riding, motorcycles, and, uh, you know, the kind of the weirder, odder, sort of fun things that you do. So put on you're the doing land. all these abstract things that That's right. normally people don't even have on their layout. Exactly. I think there are a lot of battery boxes out there, a lot of propane tanks. Yes, I might have a propane tank, but I try and do things that are a little bit different a little bit more fun a little bit odd you know not the typical things that you would find you know on a model railroad because everything I do is stuff that I want for my own railroad right or stuff that people ask for very cool and now you're actually scanning people here at the show so you can make their miniature versions of them exactly so this is honey I shrunk the model railroader so I am uh, I've got my my shrink ray gun and I basically aim it at uh, Oh, people. no, not at Daniel. He's small enough as it is. Oh, no. Brrr. Ooh, sorry about that, buddy. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's kind of a fun way of getting the news out about mini prints. You know, you know, yeah, yeah people like to look at the little whatevers. But uh, who doesn't want a little mini-me on their layout, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Everybody needs a mini-me. Exactly. And we can collect them. You know, like, need it, need it, want it, got it. Yeah, that's so, right. You know. Collect all of them. That's right. <laughs> so uh, I like to sort of shrink people. And it's a lot of fun. And I built up this whole collection of mini-me's you know, on the miniprints.com website. And uh, guaranteed you will see a model railroader or a friend that you recognize. Excellent. So how can we find you out there on the internet? Miniprints.com. Excellent. All right. Mini prints. Everybody check them out. And just for a fun fact here, the beaver was the very first thing he ever printed. And I'm from Canada, eh? All right. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Bye.
All right, guys, we've done our interviews. We've seen lots of models. Record crowd this year of around 800 people at wow. this show. I know, right? And I'm sure all you boys bought something. I know I did. Oh, yeah. So Come tell on. me what you guys thought about the show. I think it was a great attendance. I think all the great models that we had, it's all new stuff from last year. Okay. It's great that we see all these new models and a lot of new people in general. Yes, I've seen that, Mike. Right, and 3D printing has really taken a lot of stuff. It sure has. You know, really a lot of cool stuff here to see in just in that area alone. There you go, and Daniel. Hey, another great show like always. Glad to see all my favorite friends modelers, you name it, and of course these guys. I like your hat. Yeah, thanks guys. And Jeff. And Jeff. And Jeff, and Jeff Otto. Otto. All right guys, so now we're gonna continue on with the rest of this show. For this segment of What's Neat, I've got Matt Stern from Bachman Industries in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Hey, Matt, welcome to the What's Neat Show. How's it going, Ken? It's going fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Everything is good. So you've got a lot of new products that you want to talk about today and let the viewers of the show know some of this cool stuff that Bachman is coming out with. Yes, so we uh, just announced at the uh, NMRA show last month uh, in August um, our uh, new announcements for the year. So uh, I'm going to take you through some of those through our brochure. And uh, then we've got some samples from some uh, existing products that have been already been announced and some uh, stuff from the brochure as well. Very cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and launch into the brochure here. So I can preface this by saying that this is available on our website. Um, you can download this as a PDF from BachmanTrains.com. Um, but... Uh, Let's just go ahead and go through it here. So uh, the first thing here you'll see right on the cover, this is our uh, new steam announcement in HO scale. This is the Dreyfus Hudson. Um, it's the logical follow-up from the uh, the J3A that we uh, previously released. Right. And uh, we know a lot of people have been speculating and asking about this, so we're happy to deliver on this. And uh, we're excited to see this come to market. That's going to be gorgeous. Um, it's going to come with both the uh, with two driver versions. It's going to come with the box box drivers or the Scullin drivers. Um, I believe these are the skull and drivers in the picture here. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a beautiful Art Deco era steam locomotive. It sure is. That's that's just awesome. And then uh, in the uh, diesel locomotive section for HO scale, we're uh, doing something a little different. We haven't done a, a, a second generation GE in a little while, but uh, we're announcing the uh, C36-7. Nice. Um, we're very excited about this because nobody has done this in uh, the consumer HO scale market yet. We're the, we're the, we're the first ones announcing this um it's going to be union pacific csx norfolk southern and conrail and uh it's it's going to fill a void in uh, hopefully a lot of people's uh, 70s 80s 90s era layouts yes that's very cool and moving to uh cars here we have the uh, two new announcements in uh, ho scale well, actually we have four new announcements but two new announcements on this page in ho scale um we have the uh, Trinity 5161 three bay covered hopper. This is uh, a pretty modern hopper. The first ones came out in 1995. Um, they, uh, I believe, continue in production today. Um, don't quote me on that, but they are absolutely on the rails today. Um, you'll see if you especially go out west, you'll see long trains of BNSF uh, maroon ones like this one. Um, the, the, you know, miles long. Um, you'll find those pretty much throughout the west coast and on the east coast. You'll see the Norfolk Southern ones, the CSX. This is the, uh, the the Grain Express one here. There's a ton of those around, and it's uh, it's probably one of the most prevalent hoppers out there. So uh, it's another one that we're very excited to bring to market. Yes, that's going to be well accepted. And uh, then we have the uh, GATX 4180 Air Slide Hopper, which is a slightly older hopper design, um, but again, one that you can still see not quite as much nowadays, but they do still pop up from time to time. Um, we're offering that one in uh, Union Pacific, Burlington Northern, CSX, and in the GATX original scheme. Okay. And uh, we're, we're pretty excited about these cars because they're uh, they're a little more modern than some of the stuff we've uh, released in our in our rolling stock range. So we're uh, we're kind of expanding into uh, into a new era here. 
And uh, moving to uh, our next page of HO scale, Rolling Stuck, uh, we do have some more uh, transitional era stuff. We have the, uh, this is probably a more early diesel than transition era, but um, we're introducing a second version of our uh, steel coil car. Okay. This one's coming with the uh, the angled hood design, which uh, the original design coil cars had. Um, we're offering this in B&O, Milwaukee Road, Redding, and Rock Island. And just like our uh, curved versions, this is also going to come with uh, removable hoods and with a full load of coils that can be taken out inside as well. Nice. And uh, last but not least, in HS scale rolling stock, we have the 52-foot uh, wheel flat car. This is a, uh, it's a maintenance of weight car. Um, it would be used either to, if a railroad's getting new wheels delivered, to swap out on freight cars, or if they're uh, trucking out old wheels, this, this is how they would do it. Um, it comes with a load of wheels that will be removable. Um, they're painted in oxide brown to kind of give them that, um, you know, realistic, you know, ha haven't been rolling for a while kind of look. Right. And uh, I actually have a couple of samples of these. So I'll show you one here with the wheels on it. So each one comes with a, a load of 16 wheels, but you can add more. The, uh, the, the inserts for them go the whole way al along the car. Oh, that's going to be cool. And uh, this one is, uh, this is the most modern paint scheme we have. So these actually lasted in service for quite a while. Um, they started in the 50s. A lot of them were converted from just general use uh, flat cars. Um, but surprisingly, I mean, and this is something you'll find in maintenance of way frequently. They survived for many, many years. They survived actually up until the early 2000s with some railroads. Um, so there's a wide, wide range of areas that you can run these in. That's um, That's so this is our, more, our most recent pain scheme. This is the Canadian National, uh, the, uh, the, the, the worm scheme. Okay. And uh, as you can see, the, these are completely removable. And, uh, yeah, it'll be a really cool car. Um, again, this is another car that I don't know if anybody else has actually ever brought to the market in uh, consumer HO scale. So we're, we're pretty excited about that. Um, and I'm going to just show you. We've got uh, four schemes here. We've got the CN. We've got New York Central. We've got Pennsylvania. And then we've got – this is actually my personal favorite here. This is the, uh, the Santa Fe one. Nice. In, uh, the, uh, in the silver scheme with the silver trucks. And uh, it also has a, uh, a wood-painted deck as well, which I think gives it a really nice... It kind of helps the scheme pop a little bit. No, that's going to be a very cool car. Yeah, we're very excited about these. Um, so that's the only sample we have in HO right now for the, uh, the new announcements. You know, these things uh, a lot of times are... Uh, you know, we're, we're, going, we're, we're not even going to tooling with some of the stuff when we bring this stuff out, but it's always within a, you know, within a reasonable amount of time. But some of these things do come out, and uh, we're lucky enough to have samples. Very, very nice, Matt. So we also have a, uh, we've, we announced this previously, but we have actual artwork for our Acela 2 now, which is still coming out early 2024. Um, we've got the uh, the full train set here, which is going to come with our concrete tie easy track with uh, wide 22-inch radius curves. Um, this is going to have, this is going to be a three-car set, um, and as you may know, the actual trains are nine cars, which is very long for HO scale, so... Three cars will look great on an HO scale layout, but if you do want to make the whole train, we are making all the uh, separate sale cars to go with it as well. That's going to be an awesome consist. It is, yeah. Uh, we, we've, we've got the uh, the unpainted sample, which we uh, previewed on social media a few weeks ago um, on our test track, and that thing, that thing is long, but it looks fantastic. Ha <laughs> cool. So... Moving into, uh, I'm going to skip over this section here. This is uh, Thomas and Friends. We'll leave that for Doug. That's his. That's his area. Um, but uh, over here we have um, this is our N scale steam announcement, which is the 19th century 460. And people are very excited about this. Uh, we received a lot of um, positive comments about this at the NMRA show in Texas, and uh, we're very excited about this. Um, it's been a while since we've had a, uh, a steam locomotive from that era available in N-Scale, and we know the market has been uh, has been asking for one. So, again, it's something that we're very happy to deliver on. No, that's good. Uh, the N-Scale guys are going to love that, and there's a lot of N-Scale guys out there. Absolutely, yeah. So this is going to come with the Central Pacific, in the uh, Central Pacific scheme with uh, the, the uh, number 57 and Bison as the name. Uh, it's going to be available in Union Pacific uh, with number 1010, Baltimore, Ohio. In the uh, Thatcher Perkins, and it's the Thatcher Perkins in its current scheme, which is actually uh, so. For those of you who don't know, the Thatcher Perkins is uh, actually an existing one that's on display at the B&O Museum today. And uh, it, the, the scheme on the locomotive is the one that it's wearing now, which doesn't actually have the name, but it is the Thatcher Perkins locomotive. Okay. And 
the Pennsylvania Railroad 417 is the fourth one that we're doing. So moving from uh, early steam into uh, about as modern as you can get, we're uh, also introducing the uh, Via Rail Canada SCV42 charger, which we uh, announced in HO and is uh, actually going to be in stock very soon um, in HO scale. So uh, we're excited to bring this out in N scale as well. We know uh, this is something that as soon as we announced in HO, we had a lot of people saying, oh man, when are you going to make this in N? <laughs> so we're, we're excited about that. And uh, to add to that, we're also announcing the entire consist as well, which is going to be uh, the uh, two of the uh, coach cars, two of the business class cars, and then a uh, coach and cab car. Okay, for the bet, yeah. Which, just like the HO scale version is going to not be uh, powered, but it's going to have sound and DCC for uh, lighting and uh, horn and stuff like that. And uh, we're also doing the Amtrak Midwest versions as well. Um, currently, the uh, coach version is the only one that's out on the rails right now. They may have just started introducing some business class ones, okay. but uh, we're, uh, we're not trying to jump the gun with the prototype here, so we're announcing the coaches at this point. Dude, that's a great lineup. We're very excited about these. And uh, as, as you'll see in a little bit, we actually just got the painted samples in for our HO scale VIA ones, and the N scale ones are going to look amazing. Oh, cool. Let's, yes. <laughs> Um, so we're also announcing our uh, coil cars in N scale now. Okay. Um, they're going to come with all the same features of the HO scale one. They're going to come with the uh, the steel coil loads. Um, they're going to come with the removable hoods, and uh, we're actually doing uh, a combined announcement of both the uh, the curved side and the angled side versions. Okay. So um, you're going to have BNSF and CSX in the curved, more modern version, and then Conrail and Norfolk and Western for the uh, the, ang the older angled versions. And uh, we're also bringing our chemical tank car to N-Scale as well. Uh, we're going to do a couple of the schemes that we announced in HO, but we're doing a couple of different schemes as well. We're doing diamond chemicals and hooker chemicals, which were both available in HO. Okay. Um, and those are actually shipping now, I should say, the HO-scale ones are. And uh, we're doing pen salt and Engelhard as uh, brand new schemes for N-Scale only at this point. Yes, those are going to be colorful paint schemes. Yes, absolutely. So in ON30 scale, um, we're bringing a new hopper to the range. Um, this is going to be newly tooled. Uh, it's the uh, East Broadtop style three bay hopper. Okay. Um, we've had the two bay hopper in and out of the line for many years, um, but as many narrow gauge railroaders will know, the three bay hopper is the more prevalent one in reality and actually made it to a lot of other railroads once the East Broadtop stopped being a common coal uh, hauler. Okay. They actually, uh, they actually send a lot of those to different railroads, such as the Durango and Silverton, the White Pass and Yukon. Um, one actually made it as far as Hawaii, um, all for uh, predominantly for maintenance of way use. But uh, it's, it's just one of those cars that if you're, if you're modeling narrow gauge railroads anywhere in the country, you can use this car. Um, so we're very excited about bringing that to the range. And uh, true to the prototypes, we're gonna be offering it with a coal load for the East Broadtop version and for a painted un unlettered version. Okay. And then we're gonna offer a, uh, a maintenance of way style stone load for the, uh, the the scenic railroads, the White Pass and the Durango and Silverton versions. Very nice. And last but not least, we are into large scale now. Um, we're announcing some new paint schemes for the Dash 9. Um, I'm gonna preface this with saying these are actually conditional announcements. Okay. Um, so if you're interested in these, please contact your retailer. Um, let them know that you're interested so they can reach out and say, yeah, yeah, we, don't want, to, we want to order these. We know there are guys out, out there that are interested in them. Um, so there's the, uh, we're going to do the Union Pacific in the more recent yellow sill version. Um, the one that we re released last year has the uh, the red sill, which is the previous version of the scheme. That's right. Yep. Um, we're introducing Southern Pacific. Uh, CSX, we're returning with uh, the YN2 Bright Future scheme this time. And then we're doing Canadian National, and we're uh, doing the BNSF Heritage 2 scheme, the uh, the previous version. Okay, wow, that's gonna, that's never been available in HO scale, or in G scale before, and that's fantastic. I do hope people order those. <laughs> we certainly do, too. These, these will be very, very cool-looking models. Um, and just to round things out in large scale, we have uh, a new range of tank cars. These will be available. This is also 129 scale, like the Dash 9s, okay. um, so it's uh, scale for standard gauge. Uh, we have Shell, we have Quaker State, Texaco, and then we have one Christmas car uh, lettered for Mrs. Claus Christmas Punch. That'll be fun. Absolutely. And our very last announcement here is the uh, large-scale optical auto-reversing system. Um, and I, I could show you a sample, but it's it's a box. It's 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 probably better explaining it than uh, than showing it. Okay. Um, but uh, what it does is. Um, 
It's, uh, it, it, it's a control. It's a specially designed controller that comes with two sensors and a, uh, a track power clip. And you can set this up on a section of track. And the sen- what the sensors do is when the train rolls over the sensors, it tells the controller to hold the train there for a specified amount of time that you can set in the controller. And then it'll send it back in the opposite direction. Okay. So what you can do is you can have your trains running on your layout, but then you can also have an isolated section of track like for a trolley or for like a mine or something else where you can just have the train do its thing and run by itself. And you, you don't have to monitor it. It can just go back and forth and it'll a, just shuttle back and forth between the two points. That's a really good idea, especially for the uh, Christmas uh, China homes. Those guys love to set up around their trees or on a mantle where you can have exactly. the trolley or the train going back and forth on the mantle as a display. Exactly. Good idea. And, We've announced these previously as well, but um, we also just wanted to put these here because this this is uh, kind of related to this. But this is our uh, we're also bringing back the uh, the closed streetcar on large scale. Okay, um, it's going to have uh, metal gears this time as well. Very cool. You guys are always thinking of stuff. Absolutely, we we we, we try to. <laughs> um, so if we have some time, I do have some samples to show you as well. Okay, shoot. All right, so uh, in O-Scale, in uh, Williams um, Easy Street, we have the uh, first painted samples of our new uh, sedans. Okay. Um, and these are our, uh, th- there's going to be three different versions. There's going to be two uh, just standard cars. This one's my personal favorite because for, the, for a car of this era, late 60s to maybe early 80s, you know, for some reason, you know, gold is just the quintessential color for those cars. Right. Um, you, you know, I could I could see this just sitting on the side of a road with a Penn Central RS3 or something going past it, and uh, yeah, these will really look the part for that era. We're also doing a, uh, a sky blue version here, which really pops, looks really nice, and we're doing a uh, ambulance version, which comes with the uh, the lights and the uh, little horn on the roof here. Okay. And uh, really flashy color scheme. I really like this one. And uh, last but not least, we also have the hearse as well. Wow. Uh, yeah, the O-Scale uh, three-rail guys are going to love that. Absolutely, yep. And these are all motorized. They will all work on our easy track or our easy street system, and they will also work on any standard O-Scale three-rail track as well. Very, very cool. you got to show me the VIA. The, you got to show me yes. that. Yeah, come on. I don't, that's sitting there teasing me. Uh, I was, I was it's so there. beautiful. All right. So this is the uh, this is what I, what I was talking about. This is the uh, sample of our Via Rail Venture Cars in HO scale. Okay. Um, this is the cab car. Um, so this comes with, let me try and angle it up here. There we go. So this actually comes with the uh, the uh, same design cab as on the Charger, um, but it's a, uh, it's, it's a coach, as you can see. Okay. Um, Full interior. It's going to have interior lighting, and uh, as I said, this is going to be DCC and sound equipped. Not for power. There's no motor in this, but it's going to have uh, operational lighting and operational appropriate sounds for a cab car as well. Yes. The, pa- um, the paint scheme's also, amazing. The uh, coach car here. So this is just a standard coach car. Okay. Again, inside you can see you've got the full interior in there, and uh, nice underbody detail. And uh, then you've got the end diaphragms as well. And here we have, uh, something just fell off the desk. Um, here we have the, uh, the business class car as well. This one, um, so the difference between these cars is, uh, is, is fairly subtle, but if you see side by side, um, business class car has a, a slightly darker paint seam than the coach class car. Um, and this is actually the front. So, so there's going to be two of each of these in addition to the cab car. Okay. This is the front one that, go, that goes up against the locomotive. And the way you know that is because it only has a diaphragm on one end. On this end, it's just a, uh, it's, it's just a riveted in end. Okay. And these are going to be, be available as uh, separate sale cars, but you can make the entire consist with, with the cars that we're going to have available. All right. That's some really cool stuff. So... If we have time for a couple more things, we also have, we know a lot of people have been asking about our 44 tonners. Um, they've been in the catalog for a couple of years, and we're happy to say that they are going to be coming to market very, very soon. Um, this is the uh, B&O version. And then we also have Santa Fe. Yes. Oh, the tiger stripe. How beautiful. Yep, yeah, I love this scheme. And we also have... This is just a shell for this one, uh, but this is Union Pacific here. Um, and we actually have a couple more schemes as well. We have a Strasburg Railroad and we have Amtrak, um, but we don't have samples of those to show yet. Okay. 
Um, and I should have brought this up when I was doing the NMRA announcements because um, this is actually one of our new announcements. Um, this is the uh, first sample of our angled hood coil car. So as I was saying earlier, you can take the hood off, you can load the coils in here. This is just a sample, so there are no coils in it, but when you buy them at the store, they will have coils in them. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's gonna look, I think it's gonna look really nice. And uh, just as a reminder, we may have shown these on the show before, um, but we're also bringing out, before these come out, we're gonna have two new schemes of the, uh, the uh, curved side uh, coil cars as well. So we've got Santa Fe here, and we've got Burlington Northern. That's fantastic. Good color scheme. All this stuff is, is available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, that helps sponsor this show. And also, this is just in time for Christmas, to get your Christmas orders ready to go. Absolutely. And I do have one more thing to show. Um, so we actually have uh, our samples of something a little bit different here. Okay. This is our uh, first branch branch out into uh, prototypical uh, HO narrow gauge, um, or actually HO slash double O narrow gauge, I should say. Um, and this is our uh, Welsh narrow gauge Taliflin steam locomotive. Oh, nice. Um, these are from the Taliflin Railway, which is in Wales. Um, and uh, they're actually all the same locomotive, but it's it's worn a lot of different paint schemes in its life. So we wanted to replicate three different paint schemes just because they're also they're also attractive and it'll give modelers um, a lot of choice on, on how they can operate them. That's nice. And those run on those run on N scale track. Yes, these run an N scale track, and uh, they will. Uh, they're actually fully compatible. If you if you do happen to run our Thomas and Friends and uh, HO narrow gauge line, these will run with those as well. Wow, Matt, that's a lot of new products. You guys really keep cranking out great models for the modelers out there. We we always try to. And that rounds it out for today, correct? Absolutely. Yep. I think that's it. Well. Well, well, we'll say that's it. I could probably go on <laughs> now because I, we're probably taking up more time than we should already. No, I really appreciate you being on the show with us and informing us of all the cool stuff coming from Bachman Industries in Philadelphia. And folks, with that, that is this segment for What's Neat. All the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, or order online at LombardHobby.com. And by Broadway Limited Imports, the cutting edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at broadway-limited.com. Bachman Trains, now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. 